These are the top $25 tree hacks of the year using things like candles, wreaths, fairy lights, wall tiles, planters, mason jars, and more. Hello, I'm Shannon from the DailyDIYer.com. Let's start with some of these Dollar Tree planter hacks. For this one, we're gonna make a plant hanger using some bamboo rings that you can also find at Dollar Tree. And you're gonna need two packs. If you can't find these at Dollar Tree, grab two eight inch and one six inch embroidery hoop. That will work too. We're gonna take the biggest one and the smallest one and put the smallest one inside the larger one and use some jute and wrap it around these two to connect them. You can also find this jute at Dollar Tree as well. I found it easiest to just tie a knot in the string first and then cut a longer length off of the bigger roll and start wrapping that around. I did leave a longer tail on the knot so we can then take those two tails and then tie those two together. We are gonna be lifting up that larger ring on the outside and we're gonna repeat this process on the other side with the other larger ring. So the same thing here, we're gonna attach the larger ring to the smaller ring using some jute, tie a knot, wrap it around a few times and then tie another knot to keep it all in place. So here is the basic shape that we're going for. Two larger rings on the sides and one smaller one on the bottom. Go ahead, cut off any tails and excess jute that you have left over. And then we're gonna attach those two larger rings at the top with some more jute. Same process here, just tying a knot with the jute and then wrapping it around several times and tying another knot. I do wanna take a second and thank all of my DIY family members that have already subscribed to the Daily DIYer channel. I wanna say thank you so much, and if you haven't yet, please hit that subscribe button so you can join us here every single week for budget-friendly Dollar Tree DIYs like this one. So now that we have our embroidery hoops all attached together, we're gonna to take some thicker jute. This is actually four ply, and I will link it down in the description box below for you. I get it at Walmart for about five bucks, and it lasts forever because there's a ton on a roll. So I just tied it at the top of those two larger bamboo hoops, tied a knot there, made a loop, and then tied another knot above that to create the hanger. Then you're gonna grab a planter, a plastic one is probably best. The ones from Dollar Tree work perfect for this. We're gonna take that and we're gonna just set that down inside that smaller hoop at the bottom and we've created our own little planter hanger. Then you can add your plant to the inside of the planter, whether it is a faux plant or you can add actual dirt and soil and plants to the inside of this. This works great for indoors and out. If you have a Dollar Tree Plus and you see these larger planters that are 14 inch size, grab them. They are only $3. This is the best price I've seen on a large planter this size that you can use indoors and outdoors. But we're going to make one and turn it into a little bit more fancy looking one with the help of some spray paint and this awesome spray paint tint that I love. It is so cold here in the Midwest right now. So we have to do some painting in the garage or in the basement with the door propped open. And I also like to put a uh, Lazy Susan in the bottom of my paint tent and I will link both of those down in the description box below for you as well and we're going to transform this Dollar Tree planter with some bronze spray paint. I love oil rub bronze. It just really can take something so simple and give it more of a high end look in no time at all. You just wanna make sure to get the bottom, especially if you have a little lip on your Lazy Susan, you wanna be able to get all the way down in the bottom of your planter and then start spraying the sides. And I also sprayed the inside of the planter to make sure that that was good and covered as well. Once we put our plant inside, you don't wanna see the orange. So I was actually wanting a huge planter to put my olive tree in, but they were all so expensive and so pricey. So this is my awesome hack for that. I took that spray painted planter and took a smaller planter also from Dollar Tree and set it inside the planter upside down. And then we're gonna set our tree or our large plant down on top of that. And then grab some fabric or a blanket. I'm using some old burlap here to pad around the sides and add some more height in there because we're also gonna come in with some 
uh, Spanish moss, which you can also find from Dollar Tree really, really affordably. So I grabbed two packs of this. And the secret to using Spanish moss is once you get it home and you open it up, you want to start pulling it apart. It's going to make it go a lot further for you and look a lot more natural. So I put half on one side, half on the other side to cover up that burlap. So I love the way this turned out. Instead of spending a ton of money on an expensive pot or planter, I was able to turn this one into one that looks super nice and high end for under $7. Y'all really seem to love this fountain DIY from last year. Probably one of your favorites of the whole year. You want to grab a medium sized planter from Dollar Tree and also some of these river rocks. I think I grabbed about five bags total or hit the landscaping store and grab a scoop of them. It's probably about the same price. And then we're going to take our planter. We are going to put another smaller pot on the inside to take up some of that space. And we're just going to sit that up upside down in there, just like we did our last project. Then we're going to need a pool noodle. Sure enough, this is going to be a nice foam filler so we don't have to use so many rocks. And Dollar Tree also this year came out with these cool pool noodle knives. I love using them for the pool noodles, of course, but they also come in handy for things like styrofoam and things like that. So a great addition to your craft stash if you can find one at your local store. We're just going to take our knife and we're going to cut down smaller sections of our pool noodle and start putting them down into the bottom of our planter. We don't want to cover up that little pot in the center. Just go around it. You can also cut some smaller pieces and fill in some of the gaps so we don't have rocks falling down into the bottom of our fountain. We want them all to stay on the top and then take a fountain, which I found this one on Amazon super duper cheap and I will link it down below for you. It's got suction cups on the bottom. So you just stick that right down onto that smaller pot on the inside. And now it's time to start adding our river rocks from Dollar Tree just on top of there all the way around. You also want to add some onto the pot, the pump itself to kind of hold, help hold it down. The uh, suction cups definitely help with that, but the rocks will keep it down a little bit more permanently for you. Then you can add your water. So this fountain pump actually comes with two options, a solar panel or a USB cable. So you can permanently attach it with a USB to electricity, or you can use the sun's power depending on what area you're going to be putting your fountain in. These pumps also come with different caps you can put on the top to give you different versions of a fountain water spraying out at the top. So those were my favorite planter hacks. Now let's do some of these wall tile hacks. These all turn out so pretty and high end. Once we do some work to them, first we're going to grab one of these rectangle trays from Dollar Tree and measure the bottom of it and move those measurements over to the back side of the tile. Make a couple marks and then draw a straight line. And we're basically going to make a little inset for the front of this tray. Initially, mine was a little bit too big, but no problem. We're going to take our scissors and cut it down just a little bit more so it will fit completely inside the inset there. You also want to remove the adhesive backing that comes with these just to pull it right off the back. And we're going to add our own adhesive using this tape runner. I love this thing. It is so nice, mess free. It doesn't make your paper or anything wrinkle. And I will definitely link it down below for you along with another option that is a little bit more affordable. But if you do a lot of paper crafting, I love of this pink tape runner. So again, I'll link it down below for you. So once we get the adhesive onto the tray, place your tile right on top and press it down. And now we have a really pretty tray, which you could leave it like this, but there was a little bit variation in those silver tones. So I came in with some of this silver rub and buff. I put a little bit on a piece of paper and took a paintbrush and just painted it over not just the tile, but also the tray itself too. And I'll give you a complete cohesive look so it all blends together. And now you have a very beautiful tray. I added three pillar candles on here to just dress it up a little bit, but you could use it on a vanity for your makeup, perfumes, or for your perfumes. 
Next, we're gonna make a really classy vase. You're gonna grab a cylinder vase from Dollar Tree and of course, one of those wall tiles. We're just gonna lay the tile upside down or backwards and then measure the height of the vase onto the back there. So just like we did with the tray here, we're gonna make two marks, draw a straight line and then cut that down. Since we're gonna be wrapping this all the way around that vase, I decided to keep the adhesive on the back side of it, but once you cut it, it opens up one side. So again, I'm coming in with my tape runner, adding adhesive to that open end, and we're gonna press the adhesive that's already on the back of these tiles down. So now we have a nice sheet that has a plastic covering over it that you'll just peel off, and the whole entire back of this tile will have adhesive. We're gonna take the cut end, and we're gonna put that at the top and put the nice, flat straight end that was manufactured with it onto the bottom and wrap it around our vase. The back side, you definitely are gonna need some hot glue here to press that down so it stays. With the tray, we used silver rub and buff, but for this vase, we're gonna use antique gold. So the same thing here, just put it on a piece of paper and then use a paintbrush to get into all those grooves and all of the indentions on this vase to turn it from a plasticky silver look into one that looks really, really pretty with that gilded look. I added some faux tulips to my vase. Aren't they pretty? I love these. I'll link them down below for you. They look so real, but you can actually put water and real flowers in this vase too. Next, we're gonna make a pretty planter. You're gonna need some of these tiles from the hardware store. They're only about 25 cents each. Really, really affordable. You'll need four of them. And then we're gonna take these wall tiles, the ones that have the four different designs on them, and we are going to cut those down into four separate pieces, remove the adhesive off the backs of those completely, come in with your tape runner, and add, that, add these tiles onto the actual ceramic tiles one at a time. Time. So you can leave these silver if you want, or you can come in with some chalk paint and give them a good coat of whatever color matches your decor. I just used some black chalk paint on mine and made sure to get the edges as well as you'll see those. And once the paint was dry, coming in with some E6000 glue, we're just gonna add some to two sides of the first tile and start setting these up in a cube shape. Then I would suggest adding some painter's tape to the corners to keep this all together as it does take several hours for that E6000 to completely cure and dry and set up. And once it is, then you can remove the tape and you have a nice planter. You just set a faux plant or a real plant down inside. I think this would be really pretty too if you added some rub and buff onto these tiles with a black background, the metallic color, if you just kind of rub it on those raised surfaces will really make the design pop. Now we're gonna dress up a napkin holder from Dollar Tree with these wall tiles. They look pretty simple and basic when you pick them up, but once we add these tiles to them, it's really gonna make them look fancy. So we're just gonna take a tile and we're gonna lay the napkin holder on there and draw the outline of the U shape. Take your scissors and cut that shape out. And then we're gonna remove the adhesive backing off of these tiles and then use some super glue, which you can also find at Dollar Tree to attach them onto the front and back side of the napkin holder. So I decided to go ahead and leave my tiles silver since the napkin holder metal was silver already and then just kind of helped to make it all blend together. A really pretty addition to your kitchen or dining room table. If you've been around a while, you already know I am obsessed with fill in the blank. 
mason jars. And I love that Dollar Tree carries not just the pint-sized jars now, but they also have quart size. So amazing projects that you can make out of these. They also have a great selection of other glass jars with lids. So there's just an endless possibility of projects you can do with these. You can also find great prices on mason jars at the thrift store. So keep your eye out there for them. And if you need a ton and you really want to make a ton of things or you need to stock up, head to the farm store. They usually have the best prices on bulk especially during canning season. All right, so now that I've gone on my spiel about how much I love mason jars, let's do something with them. So I found two items on Amazon that I'm absolutely obsessed with that work perfectly with these mason jars, especially the plain ones from Dollar Tree. First being these awesome wood lids. So I actually have this in my kitchen right now to this day on open shelving. I have some of my dry ingredients and things like baking powder, baking soda, flour, things like that. And these airtight lids fit on there perfectly and look just so, so nice. And then the other item that I absolutely love are these labels that you can find on Amazon too. And I'll link everything down below for you. They look really, really nice on these mason jars. And they also look really nice on larger jars and canisters too. And you'll see that here in just a second. They stick right on and then you can just add it to your kind of hodgepodge of jars and canisters and all of your dry ingredients for baking. There are just a ton of different labels in that set you can find on Amazon. Like I said, I'll link down below for you. And then the other awesome contraption that I found on Amazon for mason jars is this vacuum food sealer. So it's really, really cool. It comes with a USB cord so you can charge it up. It doesn't run on batteries, which is kind of nice. And then you just add whatever food you want into your mason jars. This kit also comes with the option to do wide mouth jars or regular mouth lid jars. And I thought that was pretty cool. So it's versatile that way. It also comes with this um, lid popper because it's definitely going to suck that lid down for you. And how to use it is you just put the metal lid on top, put one of those plastic lids on top that came with the machine, and then your machine vacuum part on top of that. And then there's a little button on top. You press it. And once it kicks off after a few seconds, you have vacuumed out the air from your jar. So your uh, food inside will stay better longer. So once our lid is good and tight on there, you can put the metal ring on there and then just pull it out. Use that little keychain thing that comes with it to pop the lid open and it is nice and fresh. So again, I'll have that link down below for you. And next, we are going to grab a larger size mason jar. It's a quart size one that I found at the thrift store, but you can find these at Dollar Tree now, which I absolutely love. And also one of these two packs of their quote unquote decorative lids. I've always called these frogs. I'm not sure what else they are called. Kind of like a little grate that keeps things separated for you. So we're just gonna put that lid right onto our mason jar, add some water, and then you can add your fresh flowers. It kind of makes you feel like you're more of a professional flower designer that way. I always take my flowers from the grocery store and cut them all down to different sizes anyway, so they look a little bit nicer than just throwing them into a vase. And this lid definitely helps uh, keep everything in place for you and gives you more of a fancy look. I don't know about you, but I am so excited for spring and all the pretty flowers to come back again. My favorite flowers of all are tulips, which come in right at the beginning of spring, which I love. But you let me know down in the comments below, what is your favorite flower? So this is one of my favorite DIY experiments of the year. I grabbed a mason jar, some white school glue, and some food coloring from Dollar Tree. And I put the glue into a container just a little bit, and we're going to color our glue with that food coloring one drop goes a long way mix it up with a popsicle stick and then take a paintbrush and we're going to paint it onto the outside of our mason jar Once you get a good coat on your mason jar, let it dry completely. I would say a good hour or two, and this is what it will look like. Is that not so pretty? It looks kind of like sea glass, 
and it gives you a nice frosty kind of look with a little bit of tone of whatever color food coloring you put in there. Now I put a candle in mine, but my candle is a glass candle in there. So I would definitely maybe recommend using a battery powered candle if you don't have, you know, like a contained candle like I'm using here. But I wanted to show you the glow of this because it just looks so pretty and gives you a little bit of that colored tone um, through that uh, glue that we added onto the mason jar. So this experiment turned into another one. You can find this Elmer's glue that is color changing at Dollar Tree and it worked really well with the first one. So we're gonna try this with the second one. So again, just taking that glue, not adding any food coloring to this one since it already has a color to it and painting the whole outside of our mason jar and letting that dry. We're also going to add some, so here's actually what it looks like once it's dried. I want to mention that too. And then we're going to add, this is something you can from Dollar Tree. It's a little coin lid or a bank lid that you can just twist right on there. Very cool. Twist that on there. And so this starts blue, but if you show it in the sunshine, watch, it will literally turn purple. How cool is that? So I feel like this would be a great project to do with kiddos and they can make their own banks so they can save their money or their treasures inside the jar. And it just looks super cute and fun. And it was super easy to do too. Have you ever made sun iced tea? My mom used to all the time and it's just nostalgic to remake this. So I've, I'm pretty sure this is a half gallon size mason jar. I am filling it up with filtered water and then adding some tea bags into this. I'm letting those strings hang out the side and then adding the lid back onto this jar and setting it out into the sun to steep. Um, definitely doesn't really matter how long. You just want to make sure you have a good flavoring. If you like your strong, leave it out longer. If you don't like it as strong, I would say maybe an hour in the warm sun. Look at my little honey bunny. This was last year. She's grown a lot since then. She's 18 months old now. So about full grown at um, now, but this was when she was probably more about nine months old. So she's growing up so much. Super cute. Look at all her paw prints on my porch. <laughs> oh, it's so fun to look back. But here is that tea after it sat outside for about two hours in the sunshine. You just remove those tea bags. And then I want to show you this other great find on Amazon that I'll link down below for you. It's a cool little lid that just twists right on the top of your mason jars to turn them into pitchers. I also love using mason jars as just regular cups, as glass cups. So I found these on Amazon. I'll link down below for you too. They actually stack and are just a little bit nicer than the regular mason jars when it comes to cups going in your cabinet. There's also these great lids and straws you can find on Amazon. I'll have it all linked down below for you. Now let's do another craft. You're going to need a smooth mason jar for this one though. And the ones at Dollar Tree work perfectly. You're also going to need some Sharpie markers. So a nice rainbow of colors if you want, or whatever colors are your favorite. And you can just create your own design. I decided to do kind of like a mosaic rainbow look with mine, adding little squares all the way around in rows onto the mason jar. It took a little bit of time, but let me tell you, it looks so pretty once it's done. A really great item that you can add to your window as it looks so pretty when the sun is shining through it, or you can add it to your craft room to put your markers or paintbrushes or craft supplies in. You can find these mason jar lids at Dollar Tree. They have chains on them. This is a great way to be able to hang them up. They just twist right on the top of your jar and you can add them to a hook or little suction cup in your window. Make sure it's tight enough so it doesn't fall. But look how pretty this looks when the sun hits it.
Who doesn't love a good Mod Podge project? And you can actually find this at Dollar Tree 2 in the matte and the glossy version. We're gonna Mod Podge some of these dried flowers onto the front of a mason jar. It looks so pretty. And to do that, you just take some of your Mod Podge and a foam paintbrush, paint some of that adhesive onto the front of the jar, lay your dried flowers down into the adhesive, and then seal it in with some more of the Mod Podge on top. With these delicate flowers, it does help to kind of tap up and down versus brushing back and forth. And here's our little beauty all dried. You're gonna add some little rocks or sand or anything you want to the bottom of it and a candle. You can use it as a vase and just use it for decorative purposes. You can also use mason jars as a cloche, a very affordable cloche. We're gonna take some of this uh, rub and buff like we used earlier in this video, add some to a paper towel and just rub it onto the outside rim of our metal lids. It's gonna tone it a little bit more of a warmer toned gold. Totally up to you if you wanna do this or not. You can see the difference in colors once we add it on there, just antiques it up a little bit. And then we are gonna add some of this moss into to the bottom of our mason jar. You can find this at Dollar Tree too. And then you can add whatever you want into your cloche depending on the season. I'm adding a little bronze bunny that I found at the Target dollar spot into mine that fit in there perfectly. You'll go ahead and add the lid back onto the mason jar and then we're gonna raise it up a little bit using a glass candle holder from Dollar Tree and just setting that right on top. If you're not gonna move this around too much, you don't need to glue it, but if you permanently want it to look like this, obviously add some E6000 onto the mason jar and the candle holder. These bunnies came as a set, so I added one to a thrifted cloche and just paired it up with my mason jar cloche from Dollar Tree. So I could go on and on all day long about mason jars, but let's move on to our next hacks, and that is using pizza pans. Did you know you can use these for charcuterie boards too? It's much more affordable, and they're pretty good size, so they work out really well. For this one, we're gonna do a Valentine's Day theme, so I grabbed some doilies from their seasonal section, but you could use regular white doilies too. And as a fun little cup to add some of those items onto, I also grabbed some of these measuring cups from Dollar Tree. We're just gonna take these apart and use some tin snips to trim off the handles of these, just so we have just the cup part. These tin snips are so awesome. I rant and rave about them all the time. You definitely need them in your craft stash they're only five dollars at walmart i'll link them down below for you so much nicer than ruining your nice scissors <laughs> they cut through a lot easier than scissors too so as you can see i'm just making the bottom of the heart pointy so it still stays in that heart shape and then you can add little treats to them head to dollar tree they have tons of valentine's day themed treats that you can add to these or depending on what season or holiday or celebration that you're creating your charcuterie board for grab items from Dollar Trees, you'll get them so much cheaper than at the grocery store. Because as we all know, charcuterie boards can get a little pricey. So let's keep it budget friendly, grabbing some of these items from Dollar Tree instead. And they have tons in Valentine's Day colors and themes. So this all just really worked out nicely. So my biggest tip for creating your charcuterie boards is start with your biggest items first. They're gonna take up the most room, obviously. So I just like to kind of put those around the circle and little spokes and then fill in the smaller spaces with the smaller items. Another great tip here is to add these onto a Lazy Susan. It makes it a little bit easier for you to spin it around your table for guests to be able to grab what they want off of this charcuterie board. But then this turned out so cute, very, very affordable, easy and simple to do. 
You can also use pizza pans in place of wreaths. Makes a really nice alternative. So this one's gonna be a Valentine's Day theme, but obviously get creative depending on what holiday or season you're needing something to decorate your front door with. This one, I painted a really beautiful pink color, grabbed a wood heart shape from Dollar Tree, and we're just gonna dress this up with that and another item found at Dollar Tree. So now that we have our door hanger beautified, this is what I like to do to hang them. I like to take some ribbon and add some glue to the ribbon and then set the pan right on top. And that way I have everything kind of lined up in the right way I want it. I have it hanging at the height that I want it. And then I also flip it over to the back side, trim off any excess, and we're gonna use some duct tape here to really reinforce it so this doesn't fall off our door. So of course this is for Valentine's Day, but I wanted to show you one that I created for winter time too, with some wood ice skates that I found from Dollar Tree, some of their nautical rope and some wrapping paper. You all fell in love with the paver hacks video from last year. So I wanted to throw some of those in there too, because you can actually get these for super duper cheap. These crescent ones are only 59 cents and you can get bricks year round for only 83 cents at the hardware store, depending on where prices you have in your area. But we're also gonna grab one of these little stools from the Dollar Tree Plus section. They're only $5. And we're going to grab one of these round pavers, which are only about two bucks at the hardware store to make a nice outdoor side table. Look at my little honey back there too. <laughs> I love it. She makes us so happy and she's quite the model. She's always spluted from day one. It's the cutest thing. Anyway, back to this project. We're just going to take our Dollar Tree table or stool and add that round paver to the top. You can always add some E6000 or con some construction adhesive to permanently attach it. But since this is going to be a side table that I'm going to put drinks and food on, I am disinfecting it with some wipes, just getting some of the dirt off there. And then you can use it for a plant stand. You can put plants on there. Honey seems to approve. <laughs> then you can also look at her smile. Oh my goodness. How could you not love that face? And then you can also put some um, coasters on this side table um, and use it for your drinks. I think if nothing else, we need a thumbs up right now for Honey. If not for the project or any project in this video, we need it for our Honey. So hit that thumbs up button that helps out this video reach more people and I would so much appreciate it. So here I have a candle and a plant and a coaster and a drink and my little honey bun. And as you can see, this project only cost $7. Such a great deal and I love it. And I think Honey might love it too. What do you think? Now to those crescent pavers, love these. Saw this on Pinterest and had to give it a try. You're also gonna need one of those big round pavers and then you just add your crescents around it. Definitely, if you're gonna put this in the yard, you're gonna wanna dig up your yard and make these flush with the grass. Um, but I just kind of to show you this idea versus actually doing it because it had enough on hand and it of course makes the cutest little sunflower or flower depending on how you paint it. Thank you. 
Now, speaking of painting, you can turn these into the cutest little garden creatures. I did give these a good cleaning, and then we're gonna come in with some patio paint. This is actually made for outdoors, so I will link this down below for you. And it is going to be a little ladybug for our first project, and to do that, we're gonna take some a foam paintbrush and some of that red paint and paint out this whole crescent paper. To make the details of our ladybug, we're gonna take the red paint and paint a little circle at the bottom and a straight line up the center from that. Use some uh, smaller paintbrush here to paint some black dots onto the ladybug. And then once that dries, come in with some white paint to add the antenna, some eyeballs and a smile. And I have to add, I kind of feel felt bad making this because my oldest daughter is honestly terrified of ladybugs. She had one fly into her eye when she was little and she has just been terrified ever since. So this just got a cameo on the on this video or on my channel to show you for those that do love ladybugs, but this didn't hang around our house very long as I didn't want to traumatize her. But for me, I think it's pretty stinking cute. This is definitely a fun project to do with little ones, something that they can create and put out in the garden and be proud of. My son had so much fun making a watermelon. That was what he chose to turn his into. And to do that, you just take some green paint to paint the outside edge. And then for the middle, we're gonna use a combination of a dark pink and a light pink. And he just painted that onto the front. And as he was doing this, all I kept thinking was Pac-Man. You could also probably turn this into a really cute Pac-Man design. And then he came in with some lighter green paint to add the little stripes on the outside edge to make the watermelon skin. And then you can't forget the seeds in the watermelon. So a teeny tiny brush to make some little lines for the watermelon seeds. You'll see him with his creation next to his very own garden. We made him a garden last spring and we're really looking forward to recreating that this year. He did great gardening last year and learning a lot. And then he also had his cute little watermelon to add to his garden too. So now you're asking, what in the world are you gonna do with bricks? Well, they are super affordable and they're great for your outdoor decor too, in a few different ways. The first way, we are just going to take some of these battery powered tea lights from Dollar Tree and we're gonna set them right into the little holes of the bricks and you can just sit them down flat if you wanted to or you can lift them up and kind of set them on the little shelves in the middle these are good and heavy so they're not going to blow away on you the tea lights might since those are but at least your candle holder really won't and it's a great way to add a little touch of light to your outdoor space when you're enjoying it at night Now we're gonna make a little centerpiece for the outdoors with a silver tray from Dollar Tree, a brick, and you're also gonna need some sand. So we're gonna take this tray outside and give it a good couple coats of some black spray paint. Once it's dry, we're gonna take our brick and we're just gonna set that right on top of it with the openings facing up. And then you're gonna take some sand and kind of fill in those holes and openings. Mm -hmm. 
lights. You can use battery powered lights if you want, or Dollar Tree has these emergency candle uh, taper candles that you can use, d just whatever you wanna use here and feel comfortable using, but I will link my favorite battery powered taper candles down in the description box for you. And all you do is take whichever candle you wanna use and stick it down into the sand in those openings and you make your own cute little candle holder for the outdoors. Another way you can use the same idea is to remove the candles and use it for your succulents, whether they are faux succulents or real succulents. Use whatever filler you need. These are faux, so I kept the sand in there. If you're gonna use real succulents, you wanna go ahead and add some succulent soil in there so they will thrive. So I hope you enjoyed our paper hacks. Now we're gonna move on to fairy light hacks and Dollar Tree has a great variety, including warm white lights. They also have colored lights. And during the springtime, they even have these really pretty leafy viney string lights, which I absolutely love. And you can just take, this is a quick idea, just take the wire lights, wrap them around your hand, put them on a piece as a wreath. I was highly impressed when I found these kind of fluted drinking glasses at Dollar Tree. They are so on trend right now and very high end and you can find them a lot of different places, but for a much heftier price, Dollar Tree, Dollar $25, can't beat that. So we're gonna take that uh, glass and we're gonna wrap some of those fairy lights and put it down inside of it to create a beautiful floral display. I'm gonna be doing a fall theme here, but you can get creative and use whatever flowers or florals match whatever season you're in. So we're also going to add some pine cones down in here as a vase filler, but you're still gonna be able to see those lights shining through the pine cones to light it up. Then we're just going to poke our stems down into the pine cones that are gonna help hold all those stems up for us and it's just gonna look beautiful once we have them all down in there. Fairy lights are just so nice during the fall and winter months when it gets dark earlier and it just makes it a little more cozier during those cold seasons. Now we are gonna grab a cloche from Dollar Tree. This is probably the most unique way I've ever used fairy lights before. And we're gonna take that cloche and we're gonna open it up. We just need the bottom part first and some of those warm white fairy lights. And we're gonna make the bones of a ghost. And you'll see why here in just a second. I don't even think ghosts have bones, but we need some structure in here to turn this into a ghost. So we're just gonna kind of loop this over and we're gonna flatten out the bottom and glue these fairy lights to the base of our cloche. And that is going to be, I guess, the bones of our ghost. Now we need a white sheet or fabric for our ghost. So I just kind of cut off a section to start with and then kept cutting it down to size until it just kind of rested on top of those lights. And then the bottom just grazed the bottom of the cloche.
Once I got it to the right size, I took it, folded it in half and placed it over a piece of paper. So we're coming with a Sharpie marker here to create the eyes and the mouth, just oval shapes and filling them in. You don't want your Sharpie marker to bleed onto the other side, which is why I have that paper in there. So we're gonna do two eyes and then I guess I didn't add a mouth, but you could add a mouth if you wanted to here. I just guess, guess I kept it simple. It's been a couple months since I did this project. Stick it on there and then we're gonna put the cloche top back on and then once we light up those fairy lights, we have a lighted ghost. Makes for a really cute night light or shelf decor piece for Halloween. I've done some really fun candle hacks over the years, but these are my favorites from this year. I love these jar candles because you can melt them down and turn them into other candles or dress them up even further. I wanna give you some tips on how to melt these down though. And the best way that I've found is to fill up a big pot of water about halfway and then put your oven, or not your oven, your stove, on low to medium heat. Then we're going to add our candles right into the water before it gets warm, before it's boiling. We want it to all kind of come up to temperature at the same time. And as you can see, we're starting to get some rolling boil going or a slow simmer going. It's okay if it gets to a higher boil, that'll just melt your candles faster. But I like to do a slow boil. It just seems to be a little bit easier. Then we're going to remove the wicks from the wax. Once it's completely melted down, you can hang on to those wicks because those can be reused um, it, or you can buy new ones. It's totally up to you. And for our first project, we are going to make some fire starters. So to do that, I am laying out some of this freezer paper to protect my countertop. And then back at Dollar Tree, I grabbed one of these metal muffin tins. And then we're also going to add some of these paper baking cups that you can find at Dollar Tree too and line your muffin pans. And then for the ingredients here, I have some dried oranges, I have star anise, some cinnamon sticks, and then some juniper sprigs from a tree in our backyard. And it's all beautiful smells. It's really gonna make our fire starter smell good. And definitely recommend cutting all of this up into smaller pieces so we can put them into the individual muffin tins. I'm also protecting my countertop with a towel underneath my freezer paper and then the muffin tin on top of that. Now that our wax and our candles are completely melted down, protect your hands. I have some oven mitts on here and carefully pouring that wax into each one of those paper cups. And you are going to need one candle to do five of these two candles if you want to fill up all the baking sheets then you're going to let it start to cool not all the way just getting that film on top of there and then we can start adding our ingredients to these muffin tins such as the cinnamon sticks and the oranges the spice and the juniper sprigs These are just lovely and they smell so good. They make great gift ideas. I would say put these in your bonfires outside for a beautiful smell or if you're gonna use them inside for an indoor fire, I would put them in something that is fireproof so that it catches the wax because you don't want that in your fireplace. This is my favorite Christmas candle idea. You can find these LED candles at Dollar Tree. We're actually gonna disassemble this and we are going to take this apart. We're going to just unscrew the bottom and keep that battery. You never know when you're gonna use it. And then we're going to pop the bottom off and using some pliers, we are gonna remove the light out from the center. 
Then I cut out a silhouette of a nativity with my Cricut machine and scaled it down to size so it would fit within the inside of the candle. And we're gonna apply this decal right to the inside edge of the candle. And we are going to add a separate candle to the inside here to give us a pretty glow and silhouette. So you can kind of see that decal in the center there, but once you set it on top of another LED candle, it just really glows and gives you a really pretty and beautiful Christmas decor piece. So I've also done so many different wreath hacks throughout the years, but I wanted to show you my actual favorite wreath of the year, and it is pretty simple. It's actually a fabric wreath, and if you're a crafter, you'll appreciate this one. We're gonna take one of these green foam wreaths from Dollar Tree, and then I found this really pretty, fun, colorful fabric, and honestly, this day, I must have been in a super colorful mood wearing my DIY tie-dye shirt for this project, too. I'm just taking my fabric and ironing it out so there's no wrinkles. I'm pairing it with a black and white polka dot fabric and then just a plain white fabric. And we're gonna take the black and white fabrics, lay them on top of each other and just cut them into strips. And this is my favorite crafting product ever made, ever, ever. It is fabric glue sticks. I am not a sewer, and if you're not a sewer, you need these in your life. They come in white and black. I'll link them down below for you. We're gonna use the white ones for this project. We're gonna take those strips and we are going to glue the strips along the outside of this wreath, just twisting them around and adding some of that glue here and there so it stays in place. So we're actually gonna make this a striped wreath. So we're gonna come in every once in a while with some white fabric, gluing that to the black fabric to give us the alternating black and white stripes. All right, here is our little cutie wreath so far. Now it's time to work with that colorful fabric and we're gonna get in, in our creative zone here and freehand some little flowers. If you fold your fabric in half and then cut them out, you will get double the amount of flowers to save you some time. So as you can see, I did different sizes of flowers as well. So some larger ones, medium sized ones, and small ones. We're gonna use that fabric hot glue to attach the flowers in a random pattern around just one side of our wreath. And then we're also going to use some cute little buttons. Some of these are from Dollar Tree too, to make little centers of our flowers. This just brings me so much joy. I love the kind of funkiness of this, the craftiness of this. But of course, put your own spin and style onto this. Add your own fabric combination that brings you joy and make your own crafty wreath using fabric 
buttons, and a Dollar Tree wreath. We're gonna use this willow wreath in a unique way. This is from Dollar Tree too, along with a white plate from Dollar Tree. And we're literally just gonna set the plate right down on top of the willow wreath. Grab one of these round styrofoam pieces from Dollar Tree and hot glue that to the center of the plate. Add some more hot glue on top of that and add some green moss into the glue. You can find green moss at Dollar Tree, but sometimes it's all brown. So I had to resort to using some craft store uh, moss for this. Not a big deal though, pretty comparable in price, just a bigger pack. Then we're gonna come in with some of these faux tulips. Actually handmade these, not the tulips. I added the bulbs to the bottom with some Dollar Tree styrofoam balls, some, uh, paper bags and some Spanish moss and just stuck them down in there with a little toothpick to keep them upright. Then we're gonna take a terracotta pot from Dollar Tree and we're actually just going to break this. We're actually gonna put this into a plastic bag so we can safely take a hammer, a hammer pop it onto the top, crush it down, and then we have pieces of a pot that we can then just glue to the moss and make a little nest for some eggs. This really does make for a really cute and primitive uh, decorative piece for springtime. Very, very popular to use tulips and terracotta pots and moss and eggs and just looks really, really pretty and classy. So I actually did a book hacks video this past year and honestly, this is my favorite project from that video and it's not necessarily crafting with books. It's actually a book holder and I also got to work with some wood, which I absolutely love doing. So this is a one by four that we are going to cut down into a book holder and using these few steps. So I have three pieces here. We're going to cut them down to size. This one, we're going to take our miter saw. We're going to move it over to the 60 degree mark, which you can see down here, moves the saw angle over. To get the most out of our wood, we're going to cut the corner off, making sure our blade hits that corner that's closest to you. And as you can see, we just cut a triangle off. We need this longer piece here on the left. We're gonna do the same thing to a second piece. So we're gonna have two pieces that are exactly the same. Cutting that corner piece off at 60 degrees, we're gonna take that triangle off and keep that piece on the left. Now we need to cut the other side of the boards that we just cut. So we're gonna move our saw over to 30 degrees this time and put the board back up against the saw, this time with the highest point or the tallest point facing to the left we're going to measure over to 11 inches and then we are going to take our saw and you can see mine kind of casts a shadow down we're going to cut right up to that 11 inch mark so here you can see we have one piece we need two pieces that are going to look just like this but both ends of our one by four are cut one at 60 degrees and one at 30 degrees with the longest edge being 11 inches. Now we need to make sure both of these pieces are exactly the same. If they're not, then now's a great time to go back and make any adjustments. And they're basically going to line up like this in a triangle pattern. For our third piece of one by four, we're gonna line this up, actually set it on its side versus flat against the saw. So we get this angle, the shorter angle going off on the edge. 
Now we're gonna take this piece over and we're gonna do some mock-ups. So we're gonna put our triangle onto the wood and you can see here, it basically just has a continuation angle from the top of the triangle all the way down to the bottom. So we're gonna line this up on the edge, make a mark, on the opposite side so now we know exactly where we need to cut for the next mark so we're going to adjust this over again to 30 inches just the opposite way set your board up tall instead of flat and then cut your 30 degrees on the other side just mentioning here, make sure safety always first, have your safety glasses on, keep your hands out of anywhere where there is the safety area on your saw. And this is what our board looks like. We're going to take all three of those pieces over and sand them smooth. Make sure to get all the edges and the fronts and backs before we start building this. So here's our three pieces ready to go. And just like our fabric hot glue, did you know that there are wood hot glue sticks? Yep, I'll link those down below for you too. If you don't wanna use a nail gun or other power tools to put this together and build it, grab these hot glue sticks. They work perfectly. So we're gonna put this in our hot glue gun, let it heat up, and then we're gonna piece this together, starting with that big point of a triangle, adding some of that glue onto the edge, and then meeting it up with the other side. Once that glue sets up and cools, go ahead, pick it up, and then add some more glue to the bottom of the feet of the triangle and line it up and center it with the bottom piece. And there we have it, a finished book holder, and you can leave it as is, or you can paint it and decorate it however you want. I decided to give mine more of a darker wood tone with this acrylic paint, which I'll link down below for you. I love it because it gives it kind of a faux stained wood look without having such a long dry time like traditional wood stain does. And after it's dried, we have a beautiful and pretty book holder that looks really nice on a shelf. So not only does it hold your books, but it also holds it open to the page that you leave off on. So you just set it right on top of the triangle, holds it for you. And then the empty space on the bottom is the perfect space to keep your reading glasses. Or if you have a book light, you can put that down there too. I love when projects are not only really beautiful looking, but they're also very useful. And this is definitely one of those. And now I need your help. Which item should I hack next that you can find at Dollar Tree? Let me know what I should hack down in the comments below. I'll have another video popping up on your screen. Go ahead, click over and see some more Dollar Tree DIYs that you can create simply and on a budget. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you over there.